Hello and welcome back. In this video, we're going to take a look at integration of imports in ServiceNow. And we're going to be using a spreadsheet to pump some mobile device data into the platform. Is it really a replacement for import sets and transform maps? Stick around to find out. Okay, so let's quickly take a look at what we're actually going to import before before we go and import it. So we've got a spreadsheet here and I've already said we're gonna do mobile device data. We're gonna keep it really quick and simple. So in this spreadsheet, we have got um, our model. It's gonna be an iPhone 14 Pro Max Pro, whatever they're calling it now. Load into company, a type, um, we've got an asset tag, and we've got state. So we're gonna to need to do some um, transforming of this data because state live at the moment doesn't exist, all right? So we're gonna put this um, mobile device data into the asset table in ServiceNow. I'm gonna keep it really simple. So this is what we're used to doing. So what do we normally do? We normally come over here, we type in load data, and we either create new or we, we add to an existing import set table and we choose the file and we load it, right? That's how we're used to doing it, that's how they train us. But let's go and take a look at um, integration hub import. So if we type integration on the left-hand side, under the integration hub application, we now have integration hub import okay there's an option and that loads us this nice fancy screen fancy that you can tell here um it's all driven towards low and no code and given us a simple user interface um and to drive us through the experience okay so what we can do here we can create a new integration when we've done that they'll all come up in the list here so we've got a good simple view and we can see everything so let's create our new um integration as it were our new uh, data set that we're loading so we're going to call it mobile device import um good point to note out here is that we can add it to a specific application so at the minute we're loading this into global we're, we're just using a global um, application should we create a specific application for it i probably suggest it might not be a bad idea so we could have an application maybe that's mobile device imports we might have an application that's hardware imports and then contain all of our um, integrations within that um, application. Again, it's up to you, but the option's there. We'll pick global and then we'll just save and continue. We'll move on with this. And as you can see, as I mentioned here, it, it gives us the steps. It's the setup steps, actually. It's a setup! That takes us through the guided setup, right? So we do source configuration, we map it to a target. And we can do things like schedule imports, all right? So we don't just need to do a one-off load, we can schedule that import. So we'll select our source type. So for the minute, we're gonna pick Excel. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna load our spreadsheet, the one that I've already showed you. Okay, so we've got our mobile devices loaded. So that's just like our load data, right? While we're here, let's just go and have a, a quick look so we can add in our sheet number or our header row. Um, again, we've seen this before, but this is quite nice, right? This gives us the um, kind of almost like the object structure, right? That it's it's now integrating. I can't say that. It's now interrogated the Excel file that we've uploaded, and it said, "Hey, I found that, and this is what um, this is the data you have access to." And that's on the right hand side. That's the source data structure. Okay, so while we're here, let's go and take a look at the properties. So there's not a lot in here. It's just what we've already seen. But now we can map to target. So let's go ahead and do that. And we'll add some mapping. So what's the target table we're gonna choose? We've already said this is mobile device data. So we're just gonna whack it all on the asset table. We're not gonna worry about which table, the hardware table or whatever, just gonna go on asset. And here we can do things such as uh, run table business rules when importing. And again, we've seen this before on transform maps, right? In this case, we're going to say yes, because obviously um, you will know that when we load uh, or create assets or update assets in the asset table, it's going to have connotations for um, potential linked CIs, and that's done on business rules. So we're going to do that. We'll do that. We can run the import synchronously. Um, we don't really need to, so we're just going to leave that. We're going to go. Um, click Save. So there we go. We've got our, our map there, right? So now let's go in and edit it so we've we've added in our target table now what we can do is come along and take those um uh, source data and add it or map it sorry to our target table and this i'm just going to stop here I'm, 
I really like this interface where they've given us on the left hand side this is your your source data right hand side target table and it's a nice modern clean feel right and, and it's it's certainly a lot slicker than when we do it via the um, the traditional method so you can see here we've got access to all the target table fields and it's very um, flow designery in terms of you can drag and drop the pills over okay so we can map the asset tag to asset tag you can see there we've got a function field or a function option so we can um, transform the data a bit more we'll look at that in a second model to model let's do that so let's just go ahead um, and apply or at least map our source data to our target table and we're going to do that just by simply dragging and dropping it and you can see here we've got this function or transform options so here um, again you've probably seen this in flow designer we've got simple functions that we can do things like replace strings and uh, we can convert to numeric we can do some uh, regex um, so we've got some good transform options there rather than before you might have done that in a script but for this one I know that um, the state live uh, when we're loading this state live is is meaning it's in use right so I'm just going to hard code it as one just to show that you can put text in there as well again similar to flow designer we don't have to use the pills we can pick it from our, our selector on the right hand side and that's uh, our assigned to email and the type we're selecting is equal to the model category right and we'll add company in so we've got these toggles down here so what do these actually do well these are matches right so they're essentially a new way of coalescing they're our coalesce uh, function right so for this we know that the asset tag is our unique identifier for the thing right so we're going to select this as our coalesce um, field the other thing i want to point out is that on the um reference fields you'll notice we've got this little cog so let's just click on that and see what that does if we click on that it allows us again it, it's almost like um if you remember when you're transforming on the the, the kind of uh, the other way of doing it you've got options to say what field on that reference table are you matching with so the source data has got a bunch of data but how does that relate to the target reference field that you're um uh, you're matching with so in here we're, we're picking um, email because it's the email we're sending in and here we've got our, our, our kind of choice actions here so we can ignore this field we can create new or we can reject the row okay so that's all that is and again go in have a play have a look around um, but we've got the same options here for company it's a reference fields we're going to match it based on name we're sending in the name if we did send in something like the company id we'd match it on that and similarly we've got model um, a model category there okay and we just save that okay and we're going to go ahead and we're going to schedule the import or at least we're not going to schedule the import we're going to take a look see what it does so if you were to schedule it you've got all your options that you might expect so you can run it when when do you want to run it and this is almost like creating a scheduled job almost like but it's not right but for this purpose we're just going to run it and see what happens and now we can see one execution and when we dive into that we've got this nice dashboard here so we can see how many rows have been processed we can come down here and we can start inspecting those rows if we um, so wish but this I find really useful because it gives you an overview of what's happened with that import rather than just looking at the kind of list view that we've had before if we take a poke into one of these we can see this is our data okay this is our import set row um, that we've had it and of course you'd see any errors or anything there so we'll just dive back into the tool we'll go to the asset table here on the left hand side load all assets and we'll look at the ones that we've just created and here they are right so these are the two assets that we've added in from our spreadsheet the apple iphone 14 max pro max pro 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 max um, with our asset tags um, which we kind of effectively coalesced on i haven't done bunny ears for a while bunny. Bunny. our state is in use we've set it as one and we've assigned it um to those individuals based on their email addresses and that's how you use integration of import 
to load data from a spreadsheet into ServiceNow in a simple user interface. So I hope you found this video useful. I know it's been short and hopefully sweet. Um, if you have found it useful and you're not yet subscribed, please um, consider subscribing um, and hit the bell icon so you get notified whenever I upload videos just like this one. Until the next time, happy coding.